We're back with Full Metal Alchemist, this time episode four. Last time we met Father Cornello and we said goodbye to Father Cornello. Thank goodness. Wasn't a fan of that guy. I thought Cornello was a bit of a shallow villain, but at the same time, I think rather than give an interesting villain, what it did was provide an interesting experience for Ed and Al to go through. It was a bit to where they had to challenge their own beliefs. Of course, they came out on top in the end. But another thing it served to do was build up some of the other antagonists. I don't know the woman's name, the woman with the long finger that popped Cornello in the head at the end, and then Gluttony, who ended up eating Cornello. God, something so unsettling about Gluttony. I don't really know what it is, but he's probably the, easily the creepiest person so far. Episode 4 is titled An Alchemist's Anguish, so I'm sure this is just going to be a lovely time. Once again, I've got to remind everybody, I do have a Patreon. Episode 5 will be up on the Soul tier, and then Episode 6 and maybe even 7 is up on the Ascended tier right now. Thank you so much for joining me on my reaction. Let's watch Episode 4. Yeah, so I remembered that in Episode 1 we also had a really similar Philosopher's Stone that uh, Cornello had. Both times I fell off and broke, so I'm not really sure what these fake Philosopher's Stones are. These were Ed's words to Rose, words he had once needed to hear himself. Yeah, I really like that subplot with Rose. Episode 4, Alchemist's Anguish. He, you must be the bloodthirsty murderer who's been making a habit of targeting state alchemists. Good new characters here. Oh no. Well, this time, you picked the wrong target. You don't just introduce a villain fighting somebody and then the hero wins. That is a pretty cool alchemy though. Or your bullets are slow. A little more. Someone explained it to me um, that wasn't so a little bad. bit more about alchemy uh, from episode one. I was mentioning that it seemed as if certain alchemists had, you know, reign over certain elements. But that's not really a case. People don't really specialize like that. With the exception of Roy, apparently. Jeez, man. Yep. That's, um... State alchemist. Thought how I figured that would go. For all we know, you could be the next one he comes after. Understood. Oh no, I ho hope not. Armstrong's great. A little bit flamboyant, but pretty great. Yeah, after all that, the stone was a fake. But even so, the power it gave Cornello was real enough. Right, that's what I was saying. Huge Camaro right in front of us. I still wonder how he was able to use the stone to do that. I'm not familiar enough with the field of bioalchemy to really understand it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that too. It right. might be worth looking into. Who knows? Maybe we'll find something that could help us restore our bodies. Hmm. It might help if you consulted a specialist. Huh? The Sewing Life Alchemist, Shao Tucker. He's done some heavy research into chimera transmutation. I'll introduce you. Tucker transmuted a chimera that could understand human speech. That earned him his certification as a state alchemist. I understand human speech. You mean. Oh, no. You mean it talks? A oh no. Right. Supposedly, it only said one thing. I want to die. After that, it refused to eat until it got its wish. Yikes, I don't like where this is going already. This house is huge. That sounds quite dark. What was it a chimera of exactly? You okay, Ed? Daddy! There are people out here. Nina, this is why I told you to keep the dog tied up. Cute dog. <laughs> Ew. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm fairly widely regarded as an authority on chimeras, but the truth is, it hasn't actually been going that well lately. I don't like uh, I don't like the the close up shot of him Crazy. like that. It seems my ominous. They've got some ability to focus. I'm not sure they even know we're here anymore. Yeah. For, seriously. Catch these two, a couple of prodigies. Yeah. You know, I think that's like a fairly common observation people have been making about Edward and Alphonse, really. I think people get the idea of what a prodigy is kind of wrong sometimes. I don't necessarily think, and this might still be true, but I don't necessarily think... Edward and Alphonse are prodigies in the sense that they were just born able to do this high level alchemy or that they were incredibly intelligent just from the moment they were born. 
but rather they had an actual genuine spark of knowledge. They worked really, really hard. They studied really, really hard to get the base knowledge, probably far, far more than anybody their age, at the, especially at the time when they uh, did the transmutation. I think probably far more than anyone their age. So it comes as a really commanding force, like even full grown adults that have been doing alchemy for a long, long time really recognize them as such a, a force to be reckoned with. But at the same time, I think it can be dangerous because I worry for Edward because I'm wondering if the only thing that's really keeping him driven and focused right now is to get him and his brother's bodies back to normal. Because if something happens and they find out that that's not something they'd be able to do, I'm worried that he will just crash. He'll crash and he'll burn because that's the only thing that's really keeping him forward. He would have to rebuild himself at a at an almost fundamental level to to gain back that sort of composition that he has now to be able to be as driven as he is now. I think it's a common thing that people deal with in their lives when they have to deal with the loss of something that's been driving them for such a long, long time. It can be really devastating. It can be one of the hardest things you can go through to lose your sole source of motivation and then go on the journey to find something to even recover you back to the same levels. So while Edward's drive is great and while he is extremely talented and intelligent, I do worry that something might happen along the story that, that, could, that could knock him down so much that he might not be able to get back up. He's so cute. <laughs> what are you doing? You're supposed to be reading. Relax, Edward. Well, in case you forgot, we didn't come here to play horsey. Dude, that dog is huge. After all that, you must be dog tired. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Why don't you come on back tomorrow? <laughs> you really I to come again? We'll play some don't know about this guy. Hey, Nina. Okay. Oh, Mr. Tucker, I almost forgot. I've got a message for you. It's from the Colonel. He says, don't forget, assessment day is coming soon. Yes, please assure him I know. Right. Mm, oh. I don't know. Dude, I don't like the close up camera. Oh, I don't know. Bad feelings, bad feelings. What is assessment day? What does that mean? What does assessment day mean? Yeah, that's what I want to know, Nina. <laughs> that's what I want to know. Alchemists have to report on their research once a year in order to keep their certification. You see, last year, Nina, your daddy didn't get a very good evaluation. Unless I do something really impressive this year, I won't be a state alchemist anymore. Oh, no. Huh? No, you'll do just fine, daddy. I know you will. You're always studying so much. <laughs> You're right, Nina. I don't like. I have to try hard. He's he makes chimeras. I'm worried about the dog. Be left with nothing again. Oh Full no. Metal Alchemist. I need to address the elephant in the room here. If you watch my Full Metal Alchemist openings, which I'm assuming a lot of people here did, you'll know that I mentioned the one thing I knew about this show coming into it is that I was familiar with a particular scene that occurs, and I'm starting to worry that that scene is happening a lot faster than I actually thought it was going to. And now that I think about it, the title of this episode is not making me feel any better. I really hope this episode isn't going the way I think it's going to go now, but I think it might be. And if what I think happens actually ends up happening, the scene that just passed with him hugging his daughter saying that he needs to do well, just becomes so much more dark and twisted. Yikes. Your mother left two years ago? Daddy said she went back to live at her parents' house. Yeah, she, she probably knew. She knew something probably wasn't right. Not really. Daddy's so nice, and plus I've got Alexander to play with too. I yeah, no, this is. <laughs> They're gonna butter me up before they knock me down. Oh no. Oh no. Don't forget, assessment day is coming soon. I don't like the look in his eyes, man. I want to know is why this I've seen that look before. Alchemist and no one else. That is if it's the military, he's trying an unhinged to look, look almost. People who envy is the position. his voice actor the same as All Might's in the My Hero dub? Alchemist be thou for the people. 
alchemists who are supposed to be pillars of science and truth are turned I haven't seen too many dubs and I know this is an older show but it sounds like him really similar plenty of people I'm sure who have not forgotten the role that state alchemists played I'm almost sure it is civil war let me know in the comments before I earned my state alchemist certification our life was terrible we were so poor in those days my wife couldn't stand living that kind of life so she left us. I can't afford to fail this assessment. <laughs> Alexander, Daddy says he's going to play with us tomorrow. <laughs> I, uh, oh, I, I, guess I see it all happening in front of me, and I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. I, I can only sit here and watch. Hey. Oh no. Oh no. There you are. So you are home. Yes. I did it, boys. I finally did it. A chimera that understands human speech. <laughs> now Put it together, really Edward. I'm losing my certification. That person, Edward. <sighs> Put it together. That person, Edward. That person, Edward. Big Brother Ed. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just got chills. Mr. Tucker. I got when chills. Did you first get your state certification? Let's see. It was two years ago. And when did your wife leave you? That was two years ago, too. I just have oh. one more question for you. My God. Nina and Alexander, where are they? Yeah, Alphonse. Yeah, he didn't realize it either. Damn, Brett, figuring it out so quickly. What? Isn't it so obvious? Oh yeah. I mean, it out. You did it again. what a sick ago, guy. This time, you used your own daughter and her dog to transmute a talking chimera. That's awful. You can only do so much with animals, after all. It's much easier when you start with a human. That Isn't makes that right? so much more sense. I don't see Look at your leg, your arm, your brother. Those things are also the result of messing around with somebody's life, aren't they? No. They're totally different. Okay, they are not the same. Not even a little bit. The the main difference is the motivation. Edward and Alphonse were not acting selfishly. Well, at least maybe part of it was a bit selfish. But what they were doing was they were trying to bring somebody back. They weren't transmuting somebody else. They, they weren't sacrificing somebody else. They weren't using somebody else. They Their intentions were at least noble. They had no intention of losing anybody or sacrificing anybody or using them, anybody as a guinea pig. Show's experiment here with the chimeras is purely self-preservation. Show truly really only cares about himself and his... And I guess... The most noble thing you could say is maybe he cares about like pursuit of knowledge. Like maybe he really, really cares about his research to on a, like a heartfelt level. But even then, nothing about the research he's doing here is ethical. Yeah, nothing about it is right at all. And another bit of sick irony I find about the whole thing is that if you think back to last episode, he was having this whole argument with Rose about how he doesn't believe in God and he doesn't believe in, in faith and all that because he's a man of science. He doesn't believe in something unless it can be proven. Because in Edward's mind, from his words last episode, is science is kind of like the ultimate way. He is a scientist, and therefore, and therefore, the truth is sort of the ultimate pursuit. And I don't think that's necessarily wrong, but it is short-sighted and it has holes. Obviously, one of the holes is the completely like ethically wrong things that like show is doing. But it is ironic, and it is sort of undeniable that as horrible and twisted as this is, and as much as I never want this to happen to anybody again. He is sort of pushing a boundary with with chimeras, right? He is his research is valid, but it's horribly unethical. This certainly will have a pretty significant impact on Edward's worldview. I can't really think of something that happened since the transmutation of his own mom that would affect his core beliefs and the fundamental things that he, he operates on to such a degree like like this event might. Uh, yeah, he's not a killer. Not like that, at least. Edward, no. Stop. Oh my god. No. 
Oh, this is horrible. This is so sad. Even with all our power, we can't do anything to change you back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we play now? Can we oh. play now? I made it just in time. I get to remain a state alchemist. I passed. Dude, you are such a piece of shit. I'm not even sure the government will like approve of this. I, I don't know. That's optimistic, but they might. Yeah, that's. I mean, who wins out of this situation? Devil's work in this world. This case would definitely be it. The devil, huh? The state alchemist must be willing to act, able to take another's life when ordered to without question. Yeah, but this is different. Mr. Tucker's actions and our own may not be all that far apart. Ah, they totally are, though. I think there's a lot of potentially valid reasons that the state alchemist could take someone's life, although. Taking someone's life should always be a last resort sort of measure. I can still see like true villainy or true self-defense or this or that. Like there are situations in which someone, like he said, state alchemists might need to be prepared to take someone's life if needed, but nothing that Show Tucker did here was needed. So I, I think Roy is totally, totally off base when he says that they're not that different. I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can leave me a comment and tell me what you think about what he just said there. Ah. You will more than likely come across cases like this again in the future. And you may end up having to get your own hands dirty as well. God, I hope not. You're gonna shut down like this every time? We may be called dogs of the military. We may even be cursed as devils. It doesn't matter. Al and I are still going to get our bodies back. We know right. the truth. He's clinging on to that. No, we're not devils. We're not gods. We're human. I wonder why no one's capable of understanding me. Because you're a monster. Because you're acting purely in your own self-interest. You're Shao Tucker, correct? It's a cool effect Who with the you? lights. Not the lightning. Military. In his eyes. Who are you? How did you get in here? There were military police out front. Foolish alchemists who turn their backs on the ways of God. I mean, I don't Shall like it, but I like it at the same time. That's, uh... Oh, don't hurt her, though. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Once you've been given this form, there is no way of separating you again. Oh. At least maybe your passing will be in peace. Oh. oh That's horrible, man. I I mean I guess I can't really be too I mean it's upsetting. It's upsetting, but I can't be too angry at him for that. Wow, that episode was heavy. I can't help but wonder how that would have made me feel if I didn't kind of anticipate it coming. I mean, like I said before, I, I kind of knew about this scene a little bit. I didn't know the details, but I knew there was like a little girl and a dog that got fused together. And as soon as I saw them at the beginning of the episode, I kind of knew. And that's also why I kind of winced last episode when they were talking about when, when they showed the chimera, because it all came on really, really fast. But man, it was really cool how they used the cinematography. Every single time Show Tucker said something that was like kind of foreboding and ominous, they did like a really close up zoom where you couldn't see his eyes. A lot of times, because a lot of times the camera would cut off like from uh, about the nose up or they would show or if they did show his entire face, his glasses would be shining. So you never really saw the look in his eyes. The only time you saw the twisted look in his eyes was after the deed had really been done. I mean, who wins out of this whole situation? I mean, Tucker might have thought he was doing a good thing for himself. He might have thought he was getting himself knowledge or security or his research would have had purpose. But I think you have to have a lot more than that in your life in order to be happy. It's a pretty firm belief of mine that no matter how badly you desire something or, or, or want something or push toward a certain goal, if you're willing to sacrifice and give up absolutely everything, including your morals, your ethics, the people around you, if you give up absolutely everything to reach that goal, in the end, what do you actually have? 
even just internally, you're going to be lacking. I think it's a really heavy oversight for how important ethics is in our lives. I mean, I know a good majority of people that, that really don't consider too much ethics. They have like this, these internalized morals and, and rules they abide by, but they don't ever examine the ethics that they actually should live by. And I feel like that's why a lot of people don't find happiness. That's why a lot of people feel like there's something missing, like there's something wrong. And I feel like if Tucker had lived, he might have been the same way. Maybe Tucker would have gotten a full night's sleep after what he did. Who's to really say? You know, there's 65 episodes in this show and I'm only four in. The first couple episodes, while episode two did have its really dark parts, I didn't think it seemed so dark. I mean, at some point for a shonen anime, you kind of do have to expect some sort of dark and tragic backstory for our main protagonist, or at least for other characters. In this case, it was our main protagonist. It was to give them the drive, the motivation for the plot. But man, we just met these characters this episode and they were able to deliver something like this. I love the show, but man, I hate some of the ways that it has to go. I don't really have too much else to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully next episode will be a bit lighter, but I guess we won't know till we get there. Be sure to check out the links in the description for stuff that you might be interested in, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Later.